Cheers, my brother. It is near the end of the year. End of the year, my brother, man. And welcome to the Unknown Comic Book Podcast. We're wrapping it up. We're relaxing. We're doing this real off the cuff. And I hope you guys are having a good year or had a good year. 2023 was a biatch, but it is over. How you doing Yo, uh, today, my brother in crime? Uh, raps, how you doing today? Yo, man, I'm glad it's over. You know what I'm saying? Trials, trials and tribulations, man. Trials oh, yeah. And I think we've seen, I think we've seen a lot of trials and tribulations with our um, with our superhero movies, our Absolutely. superhero TV shows, our right. superhero video games, and most importantly, our superhero comics. It has been a year of shakedowns, man. They they say the superhero vibe is over. They're saying it's going the way of the Western. Superhero fatigue is all I hear. Uh, of course, that's never the case because we've been here before the movies. We'll be here after the movies. We love the comic books. But yeah, man, I think that's a perfect, perfect segue for us to do our best and worst of the year, man, because there was a lot of Decent shit, but it was a lot of hot trash, and I think we're going to talk about that, bro. There was a lot of flivel. There was a lot of flavin. And um, at the end of this, I want to I want to touch on something, and I'm sure I brought this up on the on the show before. I'm sure I brought this up on the show before because every time, every time, every time I think about on the tip of tay, on every time on the tippy tie. On a saute that I think about pop culture, I think about the Sekhmet hypothesis. Mm, so, speak, speak on it, brother. Through it, and, and I don't want anybody to be scared. I don't want anybody, nobody, be scared. If you see less shiny superhero movies over the next whatever, they will come back. And I will tell you that, and I will prove that to you based on the segment hypothesis. Mm. You, you may be right, man. I've already talked about the new Blade having a budget of about $100 million, which that might have been cheaper than the original Blade with Wesley Snipes. So, but I, new, I, a new Blade, man? A new oh. Blade? Like, bro. That new. is... To that today, and this is based on the segment hypothesis, that today, a cheap ass Blade movie will give a thousand times more value than like a luxurious Avengers movie. Oh with yeah, billions of billions of dollars. That will bring so much more value because it is different than what we've been seeing. And pop culture, every 10 to 15 years, Preach. It, it flips on its axis. Yeah. We have, you and me, brother, have lived through the 90s, have lived through the 2000s. 2010s. We've seen the grimy. We've seen the gritty. We've seen the and corny. We've seen we've seen it's seen. Really, 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 really pretty. Like La La Land in this bitch. Oh. You seen how Iron Man gets shiny and how Batman gets shiny and how everything that doesn't even need to get shiny gets shiny. Right. And now we're going to get right back to basics, right back to the dark, to the gritty, to the realistic. Not even just the, not even just the, um, I don't know because I don't I'm not look I can't figure out the right word for it, bro. Because like like even the Batman, the last one, the Batman was like yeah, yeah, with, realistic, um... realistic, but like I'm talking beyond that, you know what I mean? Yeah, until the end, that third a lot of the superhero movies suffer from that third act syndrome where they just gotta go super big. And, like, I thought if it would have uh, 
ended with the Riddler getting arrested, it, I would have been cool with that. I didn't need like that whole action. The city is flooding, escalation type. Uh, That's what I'm he, saying. That's what I'm saying. They yeah. started it out. They started it out. They didn't have the balls to follow all the way through. Exactly, man. Exactly. They had to get extravagant with it. it and why? Because we don't want that. No. no we it's... really, really, really like the Batman that like can't do shit good. Yeah, especially that early in his career. Like we have been in this, especially in the comic book, we have been like in indebted with like prep time Batman that like with prep Batman's like being dark seed, dark like to, beating Godzilla, like which uh I mean Batman can beat anybody with prep time. And sometimes it's yeah, like Batman, Batman is the ultimate um the Batman is the ultimate strategist. Right. Like if you wanted to win a war, like he's your general, yeah. I actually sure. think has been missing from Batman comics is is if if like like what about uh else worlds where United States just goes to Batman to be the general of all the fucking wars? Like he would be the he oh, would dope. he would ruin everything. Oh yeah, he would have so many strategies and already have everybody's weakness in every country. Like we can get them with financial, we can get them with you know yeah. No, Batman's the shit. But yeah, I agree with you. We've seen that Batman. We've read that Batman. All the animated versions are that Batman. Year two Batman. I want to see him getting effed up. I want him to see him like like really getting press to turn that like coal into the diamond that we should see we shouldn't see like mature batman just strategizing into like the third movie at the earliest like we really want to see him but it got super unrealistic i'm like yo he just took out like 60 crazed guys and riddler costumes and shotguns and by himself but at and, the end of the day it's still batman like I have still batman. i'm on the same page as you bro i'm not yeah just but it, no, it, i agree it's still batman bro yeah you know, like but what i'm saying the heckmet the segment hypothesis every 10 to 15 years pop culture has a dramatic shift from the shiny and luxurious and the beautiful to the dark, the gritty, the realistic, the suck my disc dick. So, what do you say, bro? We can top fives and top flizzles? Absolutely. And, and I agree, man. It's really time. I think Marvel got so arrogant and so greedy, more importantly, because they're going to come up on these lists a lot. Um, they put so much content out. Stuff that really didn't warrant um, movies or, or Disney Plus shows. Uh, you know, The Secret Evasion, such a great, great comic book. Really wasted. We'll talk about that later. Um, the She-Hulk, even though that came out in 2022. Like, She-Hulk can be introduced in a Hulk movie. We don't need a whole show of She-Hulk. Um, they got really, in my opinion, arrogant. They still had some gems. They still have uh, two of my top three uh, well, comic book content. That, they love that She-Hulk, um, the lawyer She-Hulk theme. Yeah, I mean, on paper, I could see where they were going. And, you know, you can always appreciate someone for trying to do something different. But, you know, I, I think they lost a lot of the goodwill that they had after Endgame. And I'm interested to see what 2024 does. So um, let's get into it, bro, man. Get down in the dirty. Let's get down in the dirty. So what we've done for you guys, we've compiled our top five dope comic book content. When I say comic book content, it could be a book. It could be a video game. It could be a TV show. It could be a movie. If it's based off a comic book, then, of course, the UCP crew is ready to talk about it so we're ready um, to touch on it we're ready we to want to do a serpentine style should we just like i get my five you get your five then go back and forth how you want to rock it out 
Yeah, yeah, serpentine style. And then after that, we're going to, well, you know, should we give, should we, should we give our constructive criticism first and then go into the good shit? Or should we launch with the shit we love and then end with the down note? I feel like we should start with the shit we didn't like. I agree. I want to end on the up note. It's the end of the year. So let's go with the shit we didn't like. So, uh, so uh, age before beauty. So uh, you want to go first, bro? Yeah, bro. Hold up. Yeah. So I'm going to go. We're going to work backwards. Number five, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess five being the worst. Yeah, it's just like it's so it's so not. It's so not climatic. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm starting yeah. from the least climatic shit, bro. Okay, all and right. So, so my number one peeve, right? Um, and all personally, you know, you know, I'm a reader, big reader. Uh, anybody who watches show, we all know that that Mars is like the sh- the the television movie guy, and I'm right. I'm the fucking reader guy. And we all, you know, we both, you know what I'm saying? We we both dibble and dabble in both, but he's the expert in that. I'm the expert in this. Exactly. So something that I was actually enjoying last year from Marvel was they were they were doing a lot of these like little throwback miniseries where they were doing like four to five issue miniseries that were written by classic writers during that, that, like the stories took place during their run. So for example, like last year, Larry Hama did a series called patch and it was like a five to six issue mini series about Wolverine during like those early, like 90 era Wolverine comics. It's like Patrick, for those who don't know, it's another alter ego of Logan Wolverine, John Howlett. He has literally a patch. They were really creative with that nickname, but yes, <laughs> yeah. So like they, they, you know, they did the whole thing where where they did like retro mini series where the artists got to like or the writers, uh, more like got to you know, uh, add stories to their continuity, essentially, that yeah. didn't exist before. They they gave them the opportunity to tell stories that they wanted to tell that maybe the editors were like, nah, at the time. And um, when they first started doing it, I saw a lot of value. And I really an excellent concept. It. I really enjoyed it. Great concept. Last year, they had a lot of great ones, really. Uh, and then they just kept it going, you know, as you can imagine how Marvel does, they kept it going longer than they should have. And, um, this year they came out with some crap ones. And so, uh, my, my absolute least favorite of the entire year was, the Joe Fix It miniseries. Mm. I expected so much more from it, man. You know, it was the first time they had. For those of you that don't know Joe Fix It, Joe Fix It is oh, one of Hulk's alter egos. I got him on my wall right now. One of my favorite characters. It's it's one of Hulk's craziest alter egos. For those of you that watch the movies, you don't understand that um, they never touch on all the different versions of the Hulk. In the well, movie. because because um, Bruce Banner has a uh, split personality syndrome, right? Which they never get into in the movies. So, right. like what happened when the gamma bomb went off? Actually, is it activated? Um, like the ids and and all the different, like, like you know, all the uh, fucking entities, I, whatever the fuck you want to call them, right. in his personalities, in his multiple personality syndrome. So, 
uh, all the different versions of Hulk over the years. And in the comics, been there's been so very many. Um, yeah, sure. All of them are are different versions of his split personalities, right. which is something I don't I don't even know if the movie will ever even touch on that. No, not at oh, this it's, point. It's actually like the coolest thing about him, man. Right, right. And they can do it now. That's the whole thing is they can they could pull it off. They could do a Hulk show and actually have him be like a different version of the Hulk every couple episodes or every yeah. season. Like there's so many different versions of the Hulk that have existed over the time because of this, you know, the actual theme of multiple personality syndrome. Right. But uh, Joe Fix It is one of his craziest uh, alter egos. You say and, like James Bond as a Hulk probably will be the closest. Well, he's he's or like a mafia. Like I don't he's, know. He's the um, he's the bodyguard for uh, a mob boss that runs a Las Vegas casino. Very specifically. Yeah, so it's like, I'm trying to think of like, what a comparison. I, I guess it would be like, yeah, like the the the, the bouncer, the, if you will, like the, the big bully mob guardian. He's not guardian. even like a character that you usually care about. Yeah, he's, you know he's what I mean? very he's rarely. The, he's in, the right hand, like fucking muscle for a mob boss that runs a Las Vegas casino, which is why I fucking hate, hate this comic because the Joe Fix It miniseries, it's a it's a four to, I don't remember, four or five issue miniseries. And I was just I was just waiting for something to happen the whole time. But it was just so tropey. And um I feel like first of all it was written by Peter David who created Joe Fix It and right. he'd be really like he should be the one to write a really good new Joe Fix It story. Um number one, I don't think Spider Man ever met Joe Fix It when Joe Fix It really existed in the comics. So it seems like Peter David really wanted to make a Joe Fix It Spider Man team up. So that's kind of how it kicks off. And it's basically like Kingpin came to Las Vegas with Electro and Rhino and um, Count Nefario shows up and they fight him. It's just kind of like, this is a lot of bullshit and, and the art isn't good. Um, I would skip it. I would skip Joe Fix It. Unfortunately. Definitely skippable. And I, I think, man, I, I was so excited when they made Kevin Feige like the head of everything, comic books, TV, movies. But now I'm starting to think either A, he's just stretched way too thin, or B, we may have given him a tad bit more credit than he actually maybe warranted. I don't think he really knows the source material as much. Yeah, as I don't think we... He knows we, recent source material. He does. A lot of things that happened in Infinity War... And Endgame are things that happen in recent, like John Hickman, right? Uh, Avengers comics combined right. with combined with like early shit. Yeah, and remember the MCU is based off of the Ultimate, so he he was really wasn't going for your super retro. He he it, the whole intent was to be kind of pick and choose the best elements. Out of the Marvel, out of the Ultimate, and after the Classic Six One Six, and then just kind of make his own thing. But um, I, I just think he stretched it then. But I digress. That's another episode. So that's your absolute worst. So for me, I'm not gonna go on the comic. That's my absolute worst. That's my fifth worst. Number five worst. Five worst. Okay, so there's four more that's worse now. Okay, I want to make and sure. Then the number one worst is the worst worst. Got it. All right. So my my number five was a movie, and that's why second viewings are so important because 
there's pretty much I love comic books and superheroes so much that it's rarely any that on the first viewing I'm really disappointed. It's very few that I've actually either fallen asleep on or walked out of. Only movie I ever, only superhero movie that I've ever fallen asleep on was the Ang Lee Hawk, where he was like fighting game of gamma poodles and shit. And, and it was like Nick Nolte was like a drunk, absorbing man. Oh, it was, you're like Eric Banahawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was it was weird. So Eric Banahawk, I fell asleep on. But other than that, most superhero movies, I could at least power through or appreciate something. Yeah. So th- this one was weird for me because I liked the first two, while most people didn't like the first two. Um, or thought they were weaker entries in the MCU. I thought they were kind of cool standalone flicks. And I really, really, really love this particular actor's performance. He almost saved it for me. But after the second and third viewing, once it got on Disney Plus, I was like, oh, wow, this is a shitty movie. So for me, my number five is Ant Man Quantum Mania, man. Like, Jonathan Majors was a beast as Kang. It should have had more Kang. It should have been Kang's Affinity War, where it was mostly about him and Ant-Man were backup characters. People should have died. But from the weird special effects, from them really just breaking what we expect, I know they wanted to shape the norm. Um, that weird-ass MODOK, and I'm like, dude, you wasted such a good character in MODOK and just like threw him away. You really nerfed Kang. I understand, you know, there's infinite of them, but, like, if this was supposed to be the Kang, like, I'm sorry, Kang is an Avengers-level villain. Like, Ant-Man should have got body. Kang is is Marvel Universe touching every level of everything. Yes. And to lose to, like, Number one, why is Kang fist fighting? I understand, you know, most of his power was gone and power core was broken, but like Scott was having trouble with hope. I don't think he, I mean, his training I mean, that trying to build him up, man. I think they had like much bigger plans and yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen now, bro. I don't know. And the trial's taking place, man. Some interesting stuff going on. I need to, I need to rewatch it though, because I'm with you. I, I, I really liked it uh, first time around theaters. Yeah, first time in the theaters, I thought it was cool. on digital. You know what I mean? I put it on yeah. a digital movie before I go to sleep. I fall asleep watching it, so I I made it through the second the second watchings. But uh, let's let me get through the second watchings and get back to you. But yeah, man, the what special you're saying, effects. That's what you're seeing? Yeah, the special effects are rough. You're wasting Bill Murray. Um, some of the uh, why they swap. Yeah, Bill Murray was it a like you don't do Bill Murray like that. Uh, and then they really wasted the opportunity to kill off somebody and make Kang a threat. Like, there's no way 80 year old Michael Douglas should have made that out, made it out of that movie. That was your just like they did Anthony Hopkins in Thor. Uh, that was your perfect opportunity to get off that boat of that old actor before, unfortunately, something happens, and then you end up having to recast like William Hurt. So, um, yeah, man, it, I, I just felt that movie, after the second watch, it really didn't hold up. So that's my number five worst of the year. But give it a second watch, bro, and get back to me. I, I, I think you'll agree. I was like, come on, man. I don't know, man. I don't know. Now you got me convinced. But it's five, so it it, it barely made the cuffs of. Uh, but it, there was some good, good superhero content that didn't have anything to do with Marvel this year, so that's why it didn't make that cut. Can we pause this so I can take a piss, bro? Your thing, man. Oh yeah. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and roll into our number four worst comic book content of 2023. Oh, uh, goddamn. So what do you got, Raps? Well, I'm going to go right in. I set it up with, you know, I was talking about those mini, the throwback miniseries, right? Yes. And 
motherfucker. I love Chris Claremont. Chris a, Claremont X Men is my shit. But goddamn, they had Chris Claremont do an Extreme X Men. This is officially like Extreme X Men Volume Three, but it was just like a an unnecessary five part addition to the the mythos of Extreme X Men. Which, if you're a Die Hard X Men fan, it's kind of crucial to the mythos. It involves like the diaries of destiny and you know, fuck it. Just, just look up X stream X men by Chris Claremont, but just stay away from this most recent shits because it's just unnecessary. Um, Ogun possesses, I mean, Ogun possesses shadow cat. Like it's a, just a lot of like old school reprisal shit. You know what I mean? Right. It was it was Chris Claremont being like, "Hey, you remember this?" His greatest hits. Kind of like what upsets me about like Chris Claremont of the past ten years or so. It's just like, like bro, like, like stop redoing shit, man. And I, but I love him, man. Chris Claremont is the X Men goat. Um, he's who got me into comic books. Actually. My favorite writer, probably one of top five or whatever, but just like Extreme X Men from twenty twenty three. Stay away from it; it's whack. I mean, all of our greats make that one album that we're like, "Hey, man, why why to do that?" It was just a experimental stage, but I think you're right, man. He he relays relies a lot on the classics, which I mean, it's classic for a reason, but. You know, if the well's dry, just say it's it's okay to gracefully bow yeah. out. There's a lot of hungry young writers out there that would love a crack at this uh, I mean, stuff. Listen, listen to the listen to the synopsis on this one. I just want you. Psychic attack has led the extreme X Men into conflict with a mysterious cabal called the Galera. I don't know if I'm saying it right. <laughs> G A L E with the E with the shmi E with the thing R E R so called Galera the gal gal Galera yeah, yeah. but yeah. what sin like is if they ain't got enough fucking terrorist groups against them right but what sinister aim is this group after not not Mister Sinister but what sinister aim is this group after and how does it play into Ogun's plan? It won't matter if the team falls before the vanguard attack of Beastie Brute. <laughs> I was like, dude, I I was at this point in time when I was reading this shit, I was writing reviews on a good read. And I was like, come on, Chris. I was like, Beastie Brute. I was like, Beastie Brute for real. Everybody look up Beastie. Beastie Brute is the wackest. Ever, he's not a mutant. He's whatever. He's just he's beastie brute. So, and I'm a fan of alliteration, but yeah, that PC brute sounds like he might be dancing that the pink banana three times, like coming up to the stage. They think that was yeah, somebody. Got Alzheimer's is what I think. No, I, I, he he salute like I said, salute to the classics. But sometimes, what did Tarantino say after ten films he's done? Sometimes you got to just say, man, this is it. Everything else is just a reprisal. So that's, so that's four. So number four for me. Oh, man. Uh, I wanted this to be so good. So damn bad. And once again, I fell under that. If, if I just watched something once and walked away, I don't think I would really have anything negative to say. But with my superhero content, my comic book content, I'm going to consume it multiple times because when I get bored, there's nothing to do. I need to spark some creativity. I might look at a scene. I might not look at the whole thing, but I want to look at the stuff again. And when I do, that's when sometimes it's kind of like that good album. Once you, you listen, right? You know what I mean? You, you know, you listen right. to it two or three times. Like, like here's the thing, though. 
here's a, I'm sorry to cut you off. Like sometimes no, we've seen some bad hero movies that, that seem bad at first, but then yeah. we them a couple times and we were like, yeah, that was dumb. Yeah, no, that I was, was looking at, at shit. It came on yesterday and I just, I was just like, oh, I might as well just watch it again and it's escaping my mind. But it was a movie that I wasn't, I don't recall being too fond of the first time. I was like, it was all right. And then under like the second viewing, I was like, oh no, this was this pretty dope. Like grow on you? Yeah. Sometimes it's the reverse effect, which is right. exactly what you're talking about right here. Shit repel you, right? Yeah. So what is this movie that repel you, bro? So this one right here for me, and it wasn't a movie, it was a Disney Plus series. I it, was, it was Secret Evasion, bro. Like ah. Sam Jackson um is fucking Sam Jackson. Like he he's got so many iconic roles uh that I can just come off with the top of my so many quotables and giving him his own series and then with the scrolls and where it fits in. Uh, into the bigger picture, I was really, really excited. And then I found out after, which it almost sucks that there's so much behind the scenes information out there. You find out like that, oh, this they had re edited five or six times. And, you know, there was a bunch of fights on the set and they had to go through so many expensive reshoots that they weren't able to like afford. St staffing and, and I mean it was just a clusterfuck and uh that's rough that's rough to hear, rough, hear about man. that from a man Sam because yeah. like, like goddamn he's like the folks yeah I do the, I mind do you. the real podcast I do the rapping but but for years before this for for decades I'm an actor man absolutely so so I mean Oh, for a now, fucking genius like Samuel L. Jackson, like I feel like he'd been disrespected like that, man. Like, now I will give him credit. I'll give this caveat: his performance was fine, it was excellent. It's what you expect, and he had a couple of monologues in it that were up there with anything that Marvel's done. But it's the rest. Like you, you can't. You can't win without a team. You know, it's, it's, nothing is a one on one. You got to have a team of good people. And if you are the only person, you know, scoring, it's, it's nothing they could do. And I hate to use a sports analogy, but uh, it, it was just, you could tell the rest of the team from the writers, the editors, they didn't have faith. And it really, th it makes me want to say, dude, Hollywood, Disney, slow the hell down. Because when you got these guys coming on the set without a script, like, and then hoping you can fix it in reshoots, that's ass backwards. Get a script, lock down a cast, find a director, get the vision. We don't need 10 or 11 films and, and Disney Plus shows every year. We were, we grew up on three or four. We're perfectly movies. fine with it, man. I was perfectly fine with it. One Star Wars every five, six years, bro. I look, yo, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry because I love this shit, man. Yeah, I man. Love like, I love my moms. You know what I mean? Like, I love you, mom. I love Star Wars. I love Spider Man and shit. Like, of course. No, it, it, like it, I can't. I can't keep up, and I, I. And at this point, I don't even care to keep up. I haven't seen the Marvels. I haven't seen Miss Marvel. I have watched one episode of Secret Invasion. I watched one episode of Loki. I hear Loki's amazing, so I need to keep going on that. I do have felt. I do have faith in that series because that yeah. that's really well made shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But. but but like, they didn't have reshoots on saying, Loki either. Bro, like, come on. Yeah. And Marvel, and I won't say Marvel, I say they're overseas Disney Plus. They thought Marvel was an unlimited ATM machine, that they could take any D list character, put them on a Disney Plus show, throw them on the screen. No one's just going to care. 
and and no one's also gonna also I haven't watched more than the second episode of Moon Knight either. Yeah, Moon Knight I still ain't there, man. Yeah, I I watched them all because I watched very little other content, but trust me, a lot of them I really had to power through, and really was like, why why am I doing this again? And I'm like, oh yes, it's a part of what I do. But it's rough, and you're absolutely right. And then the average Joe, we we're, we're the superhero comic book like nerds. Yeah, you're, we're the fucking we're the fucking the grays on this shit. Yeah. So the average Joe, and that's what Marvel built his bread and butter on, being able to attract the average Joe could look and say, "Oh, cool, Robert Downey Jr. being snarky in an iron suit." I'm down. Yeah, so they I, just think they just think the fucking the story is is limp dick, bro. Right. And that's and, yeah, I mean the, the yeah. god damn the the comic book story for Secret Invasion. Yeah. That right you know, there. That right there could be a whole if if they and they should have, man. It could have been a whole phase. They should have been done this right now because it would have been a great contrast to Infinity yes. War to yes. actually do a real secret invasion yeah. and have, like have and, and 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 they fucking blew their wad with Civil War too. So Civil yeah. War is supposed to lead into Secret Invasion, right? So we should have had Civil War, like real Civil War, right? Where they split the fuck up. But they couldn't do that because they did that before Infinity Nutsack. So yeah. they couldn't have done that. But like they could have done something, bro. We it didn't need. Been, it just should have been real secret invasion where like. The heroes don't know who's real. They see old... They, hey, yo, actually, bro, now that I'm talking about it with you, like, after Endgame, it would have been perfect because they had a could have had a whole spaceship of, of characters that were annihilated in Endgame come back and be like, I'm still alive. Yeah, perfect. And then they would have turned out to be scrawls or something yeah. like that. It would have been perfect, and honestly, oh. instead of a multiversal phase or saga, this all should have been the secret invasion saga. This whole, from right after Endgame, you know, they brought everybody back, and like you said, you could have still had Robert Downey Jr., but this time he's a little different. You find out he's a freaking scrawl, man. So many he, missed opportunities. Bro. Black Widow is a scrawl, man. Realize it until we were talking about it, bro. Yeah, but I I think Disney thought, hey, I don't want to pay Robert Downey Jr. a hundred million dollars every movie. I don't want to pay Chris Evans thirty million dollars every movie. People are coming to see the characters, not the actors. And we can just slap the Marvel label. And now they're having to go back because they're like, yeah, they realize. They got to recognize, man. Reckon, our recognize. power, man. Our, our our voting power. But let's get to number three. Yeah, there's a real reason. There's a real reason why why Warner Brothers has only been able to make money off a couple characters here. There's a real reason. Because yeah. we connect with Batman. We connect with Superman. We very, very loosely connect with Wonder Woman. <laughs> well, some of us like, more than others, but, you know. <laughs> Shang, Shang, Shang. So, number three, or number four, whatever. We're only on, are we on four or three right now? We're on three. Get to it. It's me? It's on you, brother. All right. So, my number three worst and this should have probably actually been my number five, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I just want y'all to, like, sometimes when you're reading comic books and and you're into a really, really good run, sometimes you got to be ready for guest writers. Yeah. And, and, and guest writers can be great or guest writers can suck. And, and this is the thing, man, and I want to give – 
here's the thing. I want to give redemption chance. Okay. So, but, but from this year, my least favorite comic books from the entire fucking year, anything that I bought, anything that I spent my money on was the current Amazing Spider-Man, which is Amazing Spider-Man Volume 6, actually. Uh, number 19 and number 20. By Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly it was the guest writer here in this situation. Um, this is Zeb Wells' run. Zeb Wells is the, the the main writer on the current run. Um this this was probably the most beat bootlegs Spider-Man story I could imagine. It was so fucking whack. And and the thing is, like, I like a lot. Of, like, I have a list here of, of I'm going to give you a list here of Joe Kelly's stories that I enjoy. Okay? So, so, goddamn. There was, he did a series last year called Nonstop Spider-Man, which was, like, it's totally own thing, which evolved into a story called Savage Spider-Man. So, so nonstop Spider-Man was like a story where he was like, he was hunting down this, like he was, he was on the trail of this like whole drug underground drug scenario. And then at the end of nonstop Spider-Man, he encountered the drugs and they injected him. And then he turned into fucking savage Spider-Man, a giant arachnid version, like like kind of some something reminiscent of you know when Peter Parker got the man spider with the, the man spider John right. Cool. yeah right so yeah. so it was something reminiscent of that but it was still it was really really fun and then uh he also did like the first run of Spider-Man versus Deadpool comics which was very very fun and entertaining he did um Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This was part of what got me into the X-Men back in the days in the 90s. He did um he 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 was one of the writers on The Hunt for Professor X and The Magneto War, which was like mid 90s X-Men story arcs. Um, very formative for my X Men years, and then also Heroes Reborn: The Return, which was which was um, part of the. Uh, it was it was basically like reimagining the Ultimate Comics for Secret Wars, right? So this dude has done a lot of really good shit, and then he came out with. And, and then they, they put him on the current Spider-Man run for a couple issues. Man, it was so beat. It was Black Cat, like, had some of her friends, I guess, like, get some gear that, like, mimicked other bad guys. And Spider-Man just whooped all the ass. I don't know. Like, just, just fucking, please, skip these issues, man. Please. I'm sorry. I feel like I've actually given them more time than they deserve by explaining the other shit. And it's just it's rough, man, because you want these things to be so damn good. And I, I, I like White Rabbit too. Like, yeah, you know, White Rabbit is like a really fun Spider-Man villain too. She's like, she's hot. She's like a Playboy bunny bitch that just. Like yeah. got machine guns and shit. Like we'll never get there with Disney. We're gonna be like stuck with the same four villains every a goblin of these, some sort. These were just whack issues, and I'm sorry for holding you because it really didn't deserve all of that. But you know, maybe maybe you guys find some value out of that. Let let us know, uh, good or bad, any of these uh, items of content that we got. If you're a defender of it. Educate us. Let us know in the comments. So for me, my number three 
once again, I was disappointed because the first one, not only did I think was good. Well, this is your number four. This is your number four. No, I, I, I did my number four because my number four was Secret Evasion. So this is my number three. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucked up. Sorry. No, no, you're good, bro. Um, the first one I really liked. In fact, I think it was better than people gave it credit for. I remember somehow I won a contest and I got to see an early screen in and I was like the only person in there. But it was uh, the first Shazam was pretty dope. But uh, Shazam 2, wow, did it fall off the wayside quick, fast, in a hurry. And then the whole attitude uh, behind, um, who's the guy that played Shazam? I forgot his name. Uh, uh, Flevelman. Yeah, he was in that. His name is Flam Flevelman, I believe. I, yeah, he was in some, but he, he's been a like total like biatch about them kind of getting rid of Zachary Levy. That's his name. Uh, James Gunn, you know, he came in, he became a new Jim CEO, Bob. and he he jettisoned a lot of the stuff. A lot of stuff deserved to be jettisoned. So, you know, I, I think it's kind of effed up that he picked and choose like all his James Gunn verse. They somehow were able to stay, but at the same time, that was his baby. So, he has the right to do so. And Zachary Levi has been very, uh, what did I say, a biatch, because he's been complaining about, you know, oh, you know, if you're the director's brother, you can be cast in multiple roles. So Shazam 2 was hot trash, man. The whole sacrifice of the wizard in the first one, Diamond Hansu, who plays everyone. <laughs> like, they brought him back. Like, what was the point if you could bring them back? Helen Mirren, like, she's a dope actress, wasted on this. I mean, I hope it wasn't for the chat. Here's the thing, though, bro. I just want to say this for the fans. Um, When I was about to watch this movie, Mars put me on to how much it sucked. And honestly... I did not think it is. It sucked as much as he said it sucked. Oh, let me just. I'm gonna just say that. I would just say I actually was entertained. I mean, and sometimes that's all you can ask for for movies to entertain. And I, I don't disagree with you saying that it sucked, but it shouldn't be worse than the first one. I thoroughly enjoyed the first one. The it's first past, one was so good. Yeah, the it's past the watch bat test. I've seen it at least three times. I enjoyed it all three times as I did. It's got so, so much heart. Dr. Evazin. Yeah. Dr. Evazin is such a better bad guy than these fucking much a better. gods or whatever. I mean, I just didn't I didn't think it really sucked. Like, like, here's the thing, bro. Here's the thing. Like, you did me a favor. Right, as a homie, you did me like you warned me. You were like, "This movie fucking sucks, bro." Sucks. So I went into it and I was like, "It's gonna suck," and I was like, "It's not that bad." You know what I mean? You know, because of Mary Marvel and shit. You know, so it, I'm and I'm gonna I'm gonna probably feel the same way going into watching the Marvels. I'm gonna probably feel the same way finishing Loki or Secret Invasion or any of the shit that I ain't finished yet. Yeah. It's, it's definite over this is this is another case of oversaturation. Thank you. Moving on to number those or whatever. Yeah. No, definitely oversaturated, but uh it was definitely worse than the first and that's that's a no no. You don't have to necessarily do bigger but you got to do better. So uh number two what's <laughs> appropriately number deuce what, what, what's your deuce here what's your number two there's another comic that i another uh mini series that uh, from marvel that i didn't really, I'm, I'm bashing marvel bro i'm bashing hey they deserve to be bashed this year they, they no but i love them as much man i love them as much they're my favorite man but still but we gotta stay on uh, them we can't let them over, live over in media saturation bro over saturation so uh, my probably number two here is Extreme Venomverse. Extreme, put that, wrap that around your mind. Extreme Venomverse. 
So Venomverse is already a spinoff of Spider-Verse. Right. Which is a crazy spinoff of Spider-Man. So spinoff um, of a spinoff of a spinoff. Yeah. So it's already a spinoff of a spinoff. And Extreme Venomverse is a setup for Death of Venomverse. Where a bunch of like multiple venoms are fighting Carnage Carnage figured out how to penetrate the multiverse and how to try to kill all the venoms in the multiverse. That's the whole story of Death of Venomverse. So Extreme Venomverse is the setup to that where um you remember when Flash Thompson became Venom? Yeah, yeah, Agent Venom. Agent Venom? Yeah. Well, okay. so so the lead the lead Venom in this series is Agent Venom from uh, an alternate universe where Ann Wang became Agent Venom. Ann Wang is Venom's uh for those of you that don't know, Ann Wang is 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 Venom's wife that committed suicide. Yes. In the original, well, Eddie Brock's wife, yeah. and she's in the movies. She's yeah. in the movies happily. Michelle, Michelle uh, Williams, Williams. yeah. She became Venom for a second. And she uh, was with the dude. Yeah, just they 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 had so much they could have done with her, but uh, you know they tried to do it very jokey, very Marvel style. Yeah, man, but she's she's the main uh, protagonist in the the death of Venomverse, so. So the extreme Venomverse comics are her, her going along, and just like any other Spider Verse comic, like going right. around and gathering the team or whatever. Um, but it just sucked. A lot of those characters didn't actually make it into the Death of Venomverse series, so I was like, "Why did I read that? Or why did I pay six, seven bucks?" for that one issue for like three like it's like a bunch of mini stories right a bunch of mini stories but it was like characters that didn't end up being in the thing right so i i could have done without extreme venom i i highly recommend reading death of venomverse because that's really fucking cool and ties into the next carnage series and and like actually uh for me like carnage the Carnage series is superseding the Venom series that's going on. So, but I'm just saying, Death of Venomverse, uh, uh, skip Extreme Venomverse. Got it, got it. <coughs> all right, all right. So, um, for me, my number two, and I didn't go in expecting a lot from this movie. Um, DC had been doing some flops, some heavy flops. Out of that entire DCEU, the only movies that I really somewhat rock with were Man of Steel, I thought was phenomenal. Love him. Batman versus Superman. The love it. Oh, I, love you for, I love you for loving that movie, the bro. Snyder Cut, you, bro. phenomenal. Um, and then a lot of people like Wonder Woman. I did not like Wonder Woman, but compared to Wonder Woman 84, Wonder Woman was a, a masterpiece because Wonder Woman '84 was, whew, right. uh, oh man, an abortion of a, of a film. But um, for me, I, I did not go to the movies to see this. I, I did, but I saw it on HBO Max. So even, though, even though I don't pay for HBO Max. If I did, somebody would have to give me my money back. Blue Beetle, man, and I love the character. Blue Beetle. Oh, I ain't I think, seen it. oh bro. It it is it, I felt like they wanted to be the Mexicans Black Panther. And I get it. I'm all for representation. But they threw like the Hispanic the dude. Character. Yeah, they, they threw the Hispanic dude from Karate Kid, the TV show. And then they threw George Lopez in there. And they're like joking over every stereotype, like they're cleaning and they have a Mexican it's a restaurant. Rape character, just rape character. Yeah, and and like Susan Sarandon is like, like, like Blue Beetle wasn't even original, 
like Hispanic character. Either. No, no, that Jamie was, Reyes. Like, that was the more recent virgin, right? With the with the like scarab with on the, his with, the, with the outer space scarab or whatever. Fuck yeah. that was. Versus Ooh. the Ted Court version, and they yeah. they talked about Ted Court in this one too. Man, but um, what the fuck? I want the Ted Court version. What the fuck, bro? I hate when they start off with the. It's kind of like going back to Ant Man. Like but it the, works. Ant Man worked though. It worked, and you can't do really like um you know the old school because he slaps his wife, and of course people but will they, be bringing that had, up. They had Hank Pym be part of the story. They had him be part of the story. Have, do they have Ted Cord be part of the story with the just, just in subtext like it is damn bro. Yeah, Cord Industries had like you you saw the original Blue Beetle suit and they found out like oh Ted Cord was the original Blue Beetle and they left it at that. No, but it was balls, bro. Like my it, whole dude. It, this is what not this is what DC does, man. In DC, duh crap, and that's what it is. Give a um, fuck about their own characters. Could give a fuck about less about their own characters, bro. I yeah. could work for their continuity department. Oh, any of us could, and we, we would make give a fuck about their own characters, and then they would just fire me. Yeah, uh, because they're all about making a dollar, and they said, okay, what they bet on was that every Hispanic person was going to go see it, and as they saw. If Black Panther was trash, trust me, black people would not have shown up. We care about the story. Story first. I and love Blue Beetle, man. I still ain't watched this movie. No, so bro. What's, what's next? It's, it's bad. It's bad. So now it's your number two. I thought my number two was Extreme Venomverse. Oh, it's your number one. You're right. You're right. Yeah, You're right. yeah, yeah. No, I'm fucking up, bro. And this is... This is going to be a big one for you. I know you're going to like this, man. I know you're going to like this a lot. A lot. A lot, a lot. The Riddler is another comic. Because I'm doing all comics. The Riddler Year One by Paul Dano. So, fam, because of the sex of the success of Batman number one or Batman, the Batman, because the of Batman. the success of the Batman, the Batman, the Baba, because of the success of the Baba, they let actor Paul Dano write his own. Series or that was the origin of his Riddler character in the Batman, and I assure you all, it is complete trash and filler and nonsense. And just don't wait, there's no story to it, there's no story to it. It's like, like one issue is just like, like leaflets that the GCPD found and like it's just it's, it's just nonsense it's just nonsense they should never let if they were going to let an actor do this they they should let somebody that was I don't know man I'm sorry Paul Dan I'm sorry man you, no, you don't have to apologize if he could because guess what it you killed it that. you killed it as an actor bro the, your performance is so good. He was so good, and that's what disappointed me so much. I'm, I'm, I'm positive. I'm positive that this five part black label miniseries, and I love the DC black labels right now because it's just like great Elseworld type shit. But like, I am positive that this is going to be the first shit that I sell on my eBay store when I open it up. It's garbage. Just because you can do, I mean, there's. Not, I'm not saying anyone should limit themselves, but just because you can do one thing well doesn't necessarily translate to everything, as you know, as well. So, you know, it, I'm sure Heath Ledger probably could have done something the way that he did Batman or he did the Joker, 
But um, yeah, I, I I saw when he did that. I was slightly interested, but now I'll pass. I'll, I'll pass. homage, bro. Skip it. So, I'm good. I got Skip. more. So my number one, I knew from the preview, the trailer that it was going to be trash. I skipped the movie. I waited till it came on Netflix or Matt's or whatever the hell it is on, and I watched the movie. And I say, God, we're talking about 65, bro. Uh, the common 65, uh, 65, as in 65 million years ago. It's a comic book where people in the past apparently had high tech spaceships, and it's a little independent comic that they made into a movie. And they, 65 million years ago, they crashed on Earth, and like the, actual humans were seeded from like a spaceship crash and they land on prehistoric earth and he's like fighting the dinosaurs and shit like that and it had this Adam this is shit that has Adam Driver Adam Driver bro and but that's that's a comic book that was was it was it was it the comic book new this year or the movie just no, no the movie's new but the comic book's been out for a while now but uh Oh, bro, that movie. Adam Driver, I'm kind of glad you turned down um, <laughs> Mr. Fantastic. Because, yeah, there it is. Oh, man, this movie from the directing, from the cinema. And even, even him as the character, like, and he was really in the military, but I just didn't believe it. It was... Garbage, Garbage, and he's giving us and stuff. I think he's a dope actor. But yeah, that was that was hot trash. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, Kylo. I sorry. love you, bro. I love you, bro. I love you on um. I love Girls, you. What, what, what was the Spike Lee joint? Oh yeah, um, Black Clansman. Yeah, Black Clansman. Yeah, he was open that man. He was dope in that. He's Kylo Ren. He's He's flea blow flying. You know what I mean? No, he's a dope actor. It's just, you know, I think sometimes you do a movie for you, and then sometimes you do a movie for the check. And I think this was definitely a, a check. But yeah. <laughs> he shoots dinosaurs. He's killing dinosaurs, though, bro. Yeah, he's out there with a, a laser gun. Yeah, yeah. He's out there with a laser gun, like fighting dinosaurs. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fall asleep watching it though, bro. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, if you have insomnia, <laughs> that's I'm, what I'm worse saying. insomnias. Yeah, 65, you, you, you're gonna feel like 10 years younger. You're gonna feel <laughs> brand new. That rolls, man. So, so we told everything that we hate. Why, why yeah. can't we get into what we love? Absolutely. So, do you? We'll do a serpentine style. I start with my number five, and then you can take it. So, um, my number five of uh, just comic book content that I love this year, man. And, and it could it could have been higher. It fluctuated. It went from three to five, but I, I landed on five. It was Mutant Mayhem, man? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem. God. Damn, talk about a movie that approved on Better Watches. Went to the movie to see it. Loved it. In a half shell turtle style, bro. I'm going to say low key, high key, it was probably my favorite interpolation of the Ninja Turtles. Bro. Sean? You know? And I, I never ever tell call you by your government name, bro. But like, you know how much I love Ninja Turtles. Bro. I know, bro. I know. It is. It is the beginning. It is Alpha it, and Omega. Bro, it was so fucking good, bro. So from the soundtrack to how each character was portrayed. Probably the most realistic portrayal. The animation was weird and dope and punk. And uh, Ice Cube should have got an Emmy or a the, the voice performances. The voice performances are spectacular. But Jackie Chan as Master Splinter, man, 
and in the spin on Master Splitter that he learned his kung fu from watching old uh like 80s kung fu VHS. Uh I laughed, it was sad, it was funny. Um you had everything, man. And and perfect. for real, bro, I never bro, I, I never got I I think like montages are corny. Right. But I actually got choked up during the um the annual montage. Yeah. Because I was like, how is MOP in a fucking turtle movie? It it was uh Seth Rogen, man. That shit was uh, beautiful, bro. Thank you, Seth Rogen. Uh I've been a fan. And uh, that was a, what I call a perfect movie. And like I said, it could have been higher on the list, um, but because so few people associate Turtles with the comic books and associate it more with the cartoon from the 80s and 90s, that's why it's my number five. But to be on my top five uh, is amazing. And it was the best Turtles I've seen, period. No, uh, it was my number four. Okay. But I, I can... I can keep it simple by saying that my number five was was the new Spider-Man 2 game. Loved it. Loved it. Bro, Not the story. The game, of course, is amazing. All of the Spider-Man is literally the only reason I have a PlayStation 5 is for Spider-Man. Those are the only two games I have on it. Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2. Everything else I play on my Xbox. But, uh... So what was your what was your number four? So my number four was Spider Man, but not the game. It was Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Uh, it was a dope sequel to the first one. Once again, I'm loving the resurgence of animation in the big screen. I'm for it. You can do more with it. You can go more out of this world, and um, it, it was dope. It was dope. Did I like it as much as the first one? No. Um, but it was still for what came out this year, 2023. It was super dope. Uh, and I can't wait to see where they end this trilogy with, man. I, I loved all of the performances, all the new Spider-Man and uh, that they introduced. Daniel Kaluuya as a uh, punk spider, spider punk was super, super dope. Um Oscar Isaac, he's probably going to be him and Ryan Reynolds are probably tied for the most comic book playing as Spider Man twenty ninety nine. Uh, it, it was dope. So good. Yeah, it was so good, man. And I'm, I'm happy that they're continuing with it. So that was my number. I four. have a lot of things that I could um, hypothesize about. Mm, theory time. Theory well, time. If you, if you really know the mythos of Spider Man behind Spider Verse. Mm. Then there is there's a lot of possibilities here. Mm. So just to bring you up to speed very quickly, the Spider-Man, the Spider-Verse did not exist before Peter Parker um met a character named uh fuck is his name i'm i'm fucking up i was going to say morbius but it's not morbius it's morbid time morfluous more more flavinous um hold on one second i'm going to tell you the name of von flavinous von flavinous morland there you I, go. I just remembered that I was even I was looking up it didn't came up Moreland. So listen, Spider Man met, met Moreland a little while ago. Um, actually, there was a character uh, named Ezekiel, who um, they're going to introduce you to in the uh, uh, Madam Web series. Ezekiel, they're going to introduce you to in the Madam Web movie, uh, but they're going to give you a fucked up version. So in the comic, Ezekiel comes to Spider Man and 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 he shows Peter Parker, "Hey, I can do everything that you can do." He's an old dude, 
that can do everything that Peter Parker can do. And Peter Parker's like, what's up with that? And he's like, well, uh, I will show you um, that there is there is uh, both a scientific element and a mystical element to being a spider totem. And so he prepared Peter for the battle of his life. He prepared Peter to meet Morlin, who is a vampiric entity that travels throughout the universe, uh, feeding on throughout throughout the multiverse, feeding on spider totems. So any any hero that relates themselves to it, like a like a spider like thing, is a spider totem, right? Somebody who can he can feed on. So. That is actually the beginning of the Spider-Verse because he fights Moreland, all that shit happens. He beats Moreland, all that shit happens. And then we learn later on that Moreland is part of a whole fucking species of like vampires that want to eat spider totems throughout the Spider-Verse. So that's like actually the original um, telling of the story. So my theory about the whole fucking Oscar Isaac character because they showed us a little bit of like vampire, vampire right? Uh, yeah, I think they're. I think that's the direction they're going to go with, like the mm. somewhat. I could see that. I could see that because I didn't recall the original Spider-Man '99 being a vampire. Maybe he was, but like I never. He's not. Yeah, I was like, I don't recall that element. No, See he's not. Story, he's a, but I, I went with it anyway. So, okay. Uh, All right. Miguel O'Hara is. Miguel O'Hara is just. Um, Peter Dude, he was like a janitor, right? Or something like that. And, yeah, and he's like, he's Peter Parker's, like, descendant from. Yeah. Like, like multiple generations down. Yeah, yeah. I would, so, you know what? You well, might they have. They take their liberties with the movies, but I'm just saying. Um, That was definitely an element that was never a part of we might see nah. we might see the um inheritors. Ah, I think that could be dope. I think that could be dope. All right, so what are we on? Three? Is that that's on you, right? We're on three of our best. The best a man can get. Well, then, um Three for me is across the Spider Verse. <laughs> we discovered that one. So, what's your number two? So, my number two was Loki season two. Didn't Man, watch. it it shows what happens when you do the story as a whole, like the creators pretty much knew where they were going when they did season one and they just pretty much split it. So season one was the first half of the book. Season two was the second half of the book. Mm -hmm. So there was no waste. There was no filler. Everything was tight. It was neat. It made sense. And when you have the actor that cares about the character, like Tom Holland cares about Tom Holland, Tom, uh, other British white Tom, Tom uh, Hiddleston, Tom Flavin, Tom Flavin, when uh, <laughs> when they care about the character and where it goes, and it's that perfect marriage of like creator. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful story. I can't wait for you to finish it and get back with it. I used to always say Tony uh, Tony uh, Stark had the best arc of the MCU, but now for me, hands down, is Loki. Uh, if you look at if you look uh, at twenty eleven, I, oh, I believe you. Yeah, twenty eleven Thor. The first season, it was the first season was so magical. Yeah. Um, I watched I watched the first episode of the second season. I was like, that didn't make any sense to me, and I don't really care. Yeah, um, it was I'm slow. Back in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, plug back in, bro. It was slow, but once it got there, it got there, and uh, it was it was dope. What's your number two? My number Tislu is X Men Fall of X, and this is this is a comic book crossover. 
folks. So, um, you know, the thing about X Men is that like, she does just always devastating for them. And they're either in a state of devastation or like between devastation. Mm, deep. But they have, they at this point have risen to the point where they had a nation. They were actually the, the, like they were basically like as powerful as the US, if not more in the world. And, and um, from there they have now fallen. And there is a very small amount of mutants yet alive on Earth fighting for their very existence, as they should be. And this is what happens with X-Men. This is, this is the course that the comic runs, right? Right. They, they may have some type of success rising to power but they are just always thwarted because of their differences so with the current fall of x series you know you you know about krakoa right yeah yeah so uh orcus finally had had their final attack on Krakoa and they annihilated most mutants. They, they killed the mutants that do the resurrection protocol. So folks, if you've been reading X-Men, you know that X-Men or mutants are now immortal. They've been able to resurrect themselves. Um, so Orcus, the, the anti mutant organization, um, it just destroyed them, man. And they're like in dire straits. And, and uh, like, that's the best X Men comics ever. Yeah. When they're just like struggling for their age of like, apocalypse. Like, 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 the coolest thing right now is Shadow Cat because she's just going on missions and she's like infiltrating these Orcus bases and just like ninja style, just like. Chopping dudes, <laughs> and then going, coming back, and I mean, yeah, oh man, I, I I can't even explain how cool it is if you don't really follow X Men, but everybody should get in the house or House of X, Fall of X, all that shit. Hit me up, hit me, DM me, DM me, and I will, I will literally give you like batches to read. Well, like, race, I'll you on win. this. I will. I will put you on that. You know what I mean? Like, there's. You need to read shit in order. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you that's been read, when done right. Like the first Chris Claremont X Men before I can give you the first like Chris Claremont Excalibur, right? Before. And then we go from there, man. That's what. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for you. This is knowledge. It's not just entertainment. It's edutainment. Shout out to KRS One. But uh, that we love brings comics, up. man. We love comics. We're here to. We're here to fucking. We're here for you, man. Hit me. Hit us up, man. This is trying. To be, this is supposed to be interactive. Absolutely. Okay. We want. We want all y'all feedback, and we want to see what you want to read, and and give us some shit to read too. All right. So I guess we're going number uno. My my favorite of 2023 and like i said there's been some uh there's been some bombs but then the, the gems make make the stinkers worth it uh i went back and forth with this loki because i've seen it more recently but at the end of the day the most emotional movie for me of any movie not just comic book movies but any movie this year was guardians of the galaxy 3 man that was my, that was my number one movie of the year it was the best guardians of the galaxy easy um top three best, best marvel movie ever man yeah most heart, most heart bro most heart um didn't have to worry about the multi best villain like it's rare there's a villain that i just hate 
which is a lot because Red Skull was a Nazi. And I was like, at least he had a cool car. But I did not see them pulling off uh, the high evolutionary like that, man. Not like that. Not like he it was real good, bro. And yeah. it was it was just like what like how they should be doing villain like one movie off. Like he was just he was real good for one movie off. You know what yeah. I mean? And Marvel has its trouble with forgettable villains, unfortunately. But this was not one of them. This movie uh, was so good, y'all. Everybody brought their A game. Um, I've never been more touched, man, by yeah. by, a, by a superhero movie. I've never been more touched. No, and a I CGI eyes out on them CGI animal characters. Yeah, those CGI animal. Uh, when little baby Rocket comes out and says "hurts." Uh, Instantly, my heart, yeah, bro, yeah, it dropped to my stomach. Um, I'll take a million She Hawks if every three or four years I can get a Guardians of the Galaxy three. Um, it's a it's a fair trade off. Yo, me, yo, man, please give me all the She Hawks. But yeah, that that was my shit. That was for me number one. Um, Same. Uh, early in the year, but it, it definitely lasted. So, shout out James Gunn. Yeah, but we matched out at exact same and like, yeah, like a lot of these, a lot of this top five overlap. You know, we, had, we, had, we had same decision on one because it's obvious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we I mean, had a lot of other shits. Like, I have a lot of other shits that I like from the year. I really like Shazam. Or yeah. not Shazam. Fuck. I like Black Adam. Black Adam was Black fun. Adam wasn't that bad. Black Adam wasn't Black Adam that was bad. was not as bad as we expected it to be. No, it was better than a lot of the Marvel content this year. And I really, I am not a huge fan of The Rock's acting. I think he plays himself a lot. That was horrible. His acting was horrible. But the it was like... It should have been a justice. It could have, should have been a justice, like justice society. Justice society. Man. And he just should have spoke society. less. He's, the Rock should have spoke less. Like he could have just been like the silent badass killer, ripping planes out of the air and just say stuff in Egyptian or Con Con wherever he's from, whatever mythical land he's from. He could have just said a few lines in that language. I think that would have been much cooler and made it even darker. If they wanted to, but it was a fun movie. Mm -hmm. Well, hey man, I miss you, man. It's yeah, man. We we got to do this live or at least in person. I'm coming up to New York. I've been delaying this for so long because I've had so many. But you at the top to New York, York, we're gonna do a fucking whole rap show, bro. Yeah, we're gonna we're do gonna a whole, whole thing. Mars Entertainment situation, bro. You let me know. We're gonna make it happen, but. Man, it's been a blast uh, doing this show. We can't wait to bring you more in 24, no pun intended. Uh, Rats, I love you, bro. I wish you a very happy new year, much more success. Please let the people know, of course, where they can find you and where they can find the tunes because my man is a lyrical assassin. My man is a beat murderer. He should be arrested and, and put in chains for what he does on the mic. So please let the people Man, know. Too humble, too humble. Y'all see, see, in this direction, damn, it's too hard. How do I, I'm going to point. How do you point, like, you point? Go the opposite way that you want to. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm pointing. That's my handle. Johnny Raps. Right there. Hit me up, y'all. I'll do your party. I'll do your album. I'll do your features. I'll fucking... I'll fucking, I'll fucking ghostwrite you. You know what I'm saying? He does everything. And if you like hip... When I say... I'm a, I'm a music connoisseur. And when I say this man can ride and write to any type of beat he really can he's really is, good. hey yo let, let's just uh, i want to open this up 
Because I think this is actually something. I think this is actually something that the fans could contribute to. Because mm, okay. um, I just fucking come with hard bars. You know what I mean? Like, I just fucking, I'm a fucking rapper. You know what I mean? Um, there's some people that want to hear nerd, nerdcore shit. And, like, I'm not really into that. You know what I mean? Like, like I love everything that might influence the nerdcore, right? Like, I, I love every... You know what I mean? I could nerdcore sure. wrap you off the planet with my knowledge of X-Men, Spider-Man, video games, you know what I'm saying? But to me, that is not... To me, that's not a marketable, marketable genre. You know what I'm saying? To me, that's cheating. It's right. a cheat code. Um, yeah, it's a little, it's a little niche, to say, say the least, uh, versus you know, timeless hard bars are timeless hard bars, and they're gonna last forever. So I, I think you're right in the track of where you should be, uh, because I've heard the growth, I've heard the evolution, I've heard some things that are in his arsenal that you guys haven't even heard that's gonna melt your face. So I mean, if if you if you're in to dope music, I'm not even gonna say hip hop. If you're into dope music. Please chat my man out. He's he's I'm gonna melt your mother. He said I'm gonna melt your motherfucking face. Face off like Nicholas Cage. Twenty twenty four. I got I got two albums dropping. I'm gonna melt your motherfucking face. But come come fucking see us, dude. It's, it's the unknown comic book podcast. UCP. It's your boys, and of course. The Mars Media Impact continues to grow and show uh, love, man. Shout out to all the dim mates. Shout out to all the after dark maniacs. Shout out to those pot with petty maniacs. Uh, shout out to Off Punishment. Uh, shout out to our new wrestling podcast coming in January with my man Big Gerald, who you've seen. No, I'll, I'll fuck you. Pay. I'll get, you in, I'll get you in a double clutch, Cobra Cobra Camero. Put a Cobra Camero clutch. Double double flavor flavin. Sergeant Slaughter on your oh, dart. You up, bro. Yeah. So we got that coming in 2024. And of course, more UCP in 2024. There's only one Marvel movie in 2024. So we're going to be really digging into For the real. Comics. What movie is that? Deadpool 3, man. Everything else got pushed back because the writers strike. Yeah. Deadpool 3 is the only thing that's coming out in 2025. And then they'll have uh, Echo on Disney+, Plus, but the only actual movie is Deadpool 3. And then plenty of Spider, uh, Sony Spider movies. Oh, yeah. Plenty yeah. of Sony action. Yeah, we're going to get Craven. Cravens. We're going to get Madam Web. That looks absolutely hot garbage, and we'll talk about that. I'm a but 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 but a 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 Venom, yo, man, I love the fucking, I love the Sony shits, bro. I, I like the mall stuff of Morbius. Morbius was, was a little I rough. That shit was flaving, bro. I thought, I thought the fucking, I thought the special effects was flaving. It was so bad, it was good because it really looked like somebody edited on like a lot of MDMA, and they were just oh, like, like oh, oh, Adobe. <laughs> yeah, they were just like, we got this. All right, put this shit out. But anyway, that's it, guys. We appreciate you tuning in in 2023. Uh, we got more for you in 2024. For my man, John E. Raps. And for your boy, Mars, we thank you for tuning in to the Unknown Comic Book Podcast. Tell us what's your top five and your bottom five. We want to know. See y'all on the rebound. Deuces.
This is what I'm thinking when I'm out drinking a cold sip wouldn't be bad. While I'm blowing smoke out my nose, I'ma fill my cup to the top with yak. I'm talking about a cold sip.